Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about 10 years on the dance floor. I want to explain some of the iconic moments along the way and very much just showing you the linear and progressive journey it's been from my first experience of electronic music to now doing it as a profession. And we're going to start back in June 2012, going to a festival called Wakestock. This was kind of a annual tradition from the area I live. It was a festival in Abbasock in Wales, and it was quite small with some well-known names, Calvin Harris, but at the time it wasn't quite the Calvin Harris he is now. There was High Contrast, who was a drum and bass DJ. And this was my first actual dance floor experience. I had been quite intrigued by electronic music from a young age, but we're just looking at this 10 year frame of actually being on the dance floor and hearing out of loudspeakers. So that is where we started, June, 2012. Then after this, I very much got the bug. And then that November, I got a pair of decks. So that's November 2012, so that's nearly, nearly 10 years. And that was my first experience mixing tunes. And I got the Pioneer 800 Mark IIs, and these were CD only. So if some of these new kids are watching, yes, CDs. It seems more retro than vinyl now. Then following on from this, I was just turned 17. It was actually November was my birthday when I got the decks. And that December, I went to a club, the infamous Sankeys. My friend Aaron got me a fake ID for my birthday. It was called Jamie Harrison. It said I was 22. So if the guys at Sankeys are watching this, I'm sorry. I hope you are okay with it. And I saw a guy called Gerald. It was iconic to say the least. He makes the tune called Voodoo Ray. If you've not heard of it, I will link it below somewhere. Arguably one of the most iconic dance tunes to come out of that era. But yeah, insane. So it's safe to say, December 2012, I have got the bug for it. Then we look to 2013 and in February, something big happened, which changed everything for me. I began selling tickets for a club night in Manchester. This was very, very classic of back then that you'd go and do paper tickets. You'd sell them to your mates, you'd keep two quid commission or something, or maybe three quid, and you'd very much mingle with a lot of ravers within the scene. And this is where I met my now business partners, Kurt, Dash and Mo, who I do hide and seek and you and me with. So this was a very, very pivotal moment, which really cemented me in this scene, which I didn't know at the time. But this was a stepping stone from just a raver to then actually being involved in the behind the scenes stuff. So 2013 was spent partying maybe a bit too hard. And then I turned 18 in that November. I was literally mixing every day, obsessed every evening, 30 minutes to three hours. I didn't really know any big DJs then. It was just me, my friends, having fun every weekend, playing tunes endlessly. And then in March 2014, so at the age of 18, I got my first gig, which was a small gig in a bar with my friend Brandon Darby, who if anyone's on Syntho will know Brandon from there. So we literally go back to school to like to, since we were like 11. And we got our first gig together. My alias then was B-A-Y-K-U-R. I'm not quite sure why. And yeah, we played tunes in a bar, tiny little gig. Again, it was an exchange for selling tickets. We took like 20 people, got stuck in a bar, and this was my first experience at the age of 18, playing to people in a outside environment that isn't your bedroom. Then in September 2015, I go to university in Leeds. Not everyone will know this, but I spent a year in Leeds. And I met someone called Mikey, who is the guy who still does all the work there for Mint Festival, Mint Club. And he gave me the opportunity to play at Mint Club, warming up on a Thursday night for the student events. I'd approach them off my own back, walked to their office like the first week of being at uni and said, hi guys, I'm a DJ. I can bring people, let me have a go. And long story short, they gave me a go. So at the age of 18, I played Mint Club, which was pretty crazy, pretty crazy. If anyone doesn't know Mint Club, it's now closed down. It was probably the, along with Sankey's, the best club in the UK for a long, long, long time. So to get to play there at such a young age was overwhelming to say the least and something I'll never forget and really they were magical magical times so I owe Mikey a lot and we're planning me to come to Mint Warehouse later this year for my first club show there in the main room so 10 years on well that was eight years ago we are now taking it to the next level so good story that one that these 
Roots, I speak about it a bit. These roots from the start, they run all the way through, you know? The people you meet eight years ago are the same ones there eight years later. So remember you meet now, be nice to everyone because it's all gonna come back around. Then we fast forward from October 2015, which is when I played Mint, to the summer of 2016. I go and do a month in Ibiza with Kurt, Dash and Mo and some other friends who I met when I was selling tickets in Manchester. And it was there we decided, hey, let's do our own night as I'd started to get a few gigs here and there and I wanted to play more regularly. So the next logical step was to give myself a platform to play regularly. So that was where it was. We decided let's do it. And in September, let me check the date, September 2016, you and me was born. Then we go to 2017, February, my first ever release. I released a track on a label called Blind Vision and the track was called Spoken Paris. I made this as part of an assignment at a course I did at a college in Manchester, which was not very good, so I will not name it. And yeah, it came out and it's a cool tune. To this day, I still think it sounds really nice and very sophisticated. So I'll put lots of pictures and links everywhere. And this is, uh, yeah, my first release on digital. Then after a year of a lot of producing and music making, we go to, where are we here? September 2017, Apollonia played my track Frustrated, which was like a crazy moment. I saw the video, I was like, wait, that's my track with Apollonia behind. Then the next Monday, Dan Ganashi played again at DC10, people send me videos. So for me at this age, 2017, that's five years ago, I was 21, uh, was kind of, kind of crazy, kind of crazy. So this was a huge moment. And to this day, I've still not got a video of them playing any of my music since. I don't know if they have or not, but yeah, crazy, crazy stuff. Then June 2018, so the next year, I finally released an EP on C Double, which was Luca Cazal's labels. So me and Luca met in Ibiza at a villa party. That first year I went to Ibiza with all the guys. So that was again a relationship which blossomed. And yeah, we did the EP with the Rich Next Remix. And this was a big moment for me. It got quite a few plays from, from great artists. And I feel like we're starting to get some momentum now. Then in the same month as that, I got my first international booking in Innsbruck in Austria. It was actually quite the experience, but we won't go into that today as I had to wait like a ridiculous amount of time the next day for a flight and it's a connection flight. It's not that exciting the story, but it was an amazing experience to go and be paid, to go and DJ abroad. So now it's like, okay, this thing is starting to get a bit real. Let's see how far we can take it. Then the following month in July, we took you and me and hosted a room at the zoo project. And again, the content on social media afterwards started to go pretty wild. I played an unreleased track that got a lot of love and it was starting to kind of be a realization that one, you and me could be something and two, people are starting to know who I am and starting to really think, okay, this guy's good. So it's starting to get good in summer 2018. Then that same summer, we went to Houghton Festival, which was 2018, so four years ago. And we just were blown away by all this music, people like Voitman, Delgada. And this really made us pivot the whole you and me thing in a way which is like, okay, this is gonna be a serious thing. No, because there's always the taste of tech house when you go to Ibiza and things like that. And it's always a temptation as obviously the audiences are much bigger. It's much easier, let's be honest, if you're gonna make more commercial music as it appeals to more people, so it's gonna spread quicker. But we made this decision at that point that, okay, this is the, this is the thing we're gonna pursue. I went from there and then the September of 2018, we had Enzo play for us and we sold our first show out at Hidden. I think we did like seven to 800 tickets. And this was a real big moment for you and me as there was always a doubt of, is this gonna work? Is there enough appeal? And this event showed that if you work hard enough to be consistent, good things will happen. So then in January, 2019, the booking requests are starting to come in a bit. I've had a few releases now. I'm posting regularly on social media. You and me is doing much better. And I can definitely start to feel this wave of maybe we can do this as a career. I always believed I could, but there's one thing believing and then actually seeing reciprocation from bookers and other people in the scene. So this is January, 2019. Then in the summer of July, 2019, there still wasn't really many bookings. The one here, one there. We did You and Me release called Kick It, which did okay, didn't blow off the shelves. But then that October, me and Alfie went to Devon Analog Studios and we created like 10 tracks in 
oh, I think more, I think 12 tracks in the space of three days. And these went on to be released on You and Me. We did a release on Bernski's label and we did one more, I believe. So we made a lot of music. The content was good off social media. And I think people started to really realize that, okay, this guy's serious. And the followers were creeping up, creeping up. So this is in October, 2019. Oh, and I skipped the massive one. September, 2019 is when we launched Hide and Seek Festival. So that'll be three years ago this September, but obviously we missed the year because of you know what, but we'll come to that. Then in March 2020, amongst the pandemic, I released my Suck and the EP, which was the Into Minds track, which was played by Enzo just before lockdown. He wanted to put that on Fuse or Locus. I'm not sure which one. We never got that far. It was already signed. I'm sure you won't mind me saying that. And this track really seemed to do well. I think it's the most streamed track since. Um, that SE62 played it in Ukraine at a gig and people at Anthea followed me off the back of that. The video got loads of views. So this was a tune which I think for me personally as a producer um, showed what I was capable of. So I think before that the music was okay. It wasn't that great, but this was a real club weapon. So that's where we're up to now. Then in June 2020, amongst the pandemic, I launched Syntho, which has changed my life completely. I won't be making this video without doing this project because it opened my eyes to a whole new world of helping other people, producing content and what's capable with music, not just being a DJ. So I'm forever kind of grateful for the way it panned out in the world, despite all the tragic stuff that happened as it's, it opened my mind in a way which, well, one, it made us all realize how um, short life can be, but it also made me realize that, okay, there's more to life than just playing tunes at the weekend. So despite all the horrible things that occurred during that period, there was a positive for me. So that was the birth of Syntho. Then Slippers All Summer came out during the pandemic, which wasn't great, but I think this was another step of my production journey and the quality of production was much better than what I'd previously put out. And this seemed to get a lot of love across the board. Then after the pandemic, so we're about a year ago now, July 2021, Yumi returns with much doubt and questions. Are we still going to be fresh? Do people want us back? What have we got in store? We sell out the Progress Center, first show back around 800, and we're like, okay, something is happening here. And I think from that, we're going to go through some more key dates. Things did escalate quickly for everything. Then yeah, in summer 2021 in general, everything changed because I was doing more vlogs, more content, speaking to the camera, and I felt a whole new weapon to my artillery, if that's the right word, I don't think it is, but I felt like I had much more to offer to the whole scene, to the people in an entertaining way, in an educational way, and this has really just kept going on since last summer. And then other iconic moments from last year, Hide and Seek sold out, then we also did the sellout event with Animal Crossing Halloween, which I noticed a big wave off the back of that. The gigs got a lot of requests, maybe coincidental, but the content was really good off the back of that. And a lot of promoters seemed interested to see what I was doing. Then December, 2021, huge moment, the Fabric debut. And then if we look at this year, two huge things for me with the Australia tour and the South America tour, Think as any aspiring young producer, DJ, going overseas is a big moment, but to go to the other side of the world is huge. So when we got them nailed down, it was crazy. And to go and do it and experience it and live it was better than I could have imagined. And then more recently, May 2022, the Energy EP was released, which I think everyone would agree was the most popular release I've done. Got to number three on Beatport, Minimal slash Deep Tech if that's anything to go by, whilst the record sold well. And in general, everyone seemed to play it. Enzo, Voigtman, Lauren Lowe Sung, Chris Dussie, Rossi, play, they all played tunes in the EP. And I would say it was the first release I've done that's had actual commercial, commercial is not the right word, but actual love from other artists as well as people tagging me in videos. And I feel like this was a big step forward for me as a producer, trying to appeal to more people while still staying true to myself. And then in June 2022, you and me collaborating with VBX, I would say is pretty epic as VBX is arguably one of the best underground parties in the world. And then we look at just two weeks ago, you and me at Fabric, which is probably what most 
brands dream of. So guys, that is my 10 years in a nutshell. I hope it gives people some clarity on the steps it takes to get there. I would say my journey has been quite orthodox in terms of, you know, the first VA, then an EP, then a few gigs. Nothing's really spiked it. One thing I would say is that with you and me and hide and seek, we built a great team early and we trust each other till the end, I guess. And I think if you can do this, it's going to really help you on your journey as working with people who can help you is really important for growth in the long run. And what's next for me? I think more of the same. I'm really, really into this whole YouTube, TikTok content creation thing, as well as growing Syntho. And something huge is around the corner of Syntho. So if you're an aspiring producer, make sure you're staying in touch with all my channels and whatnot. So on that note, guys, please comment below your thoughts. Please give me some feedback and let me know what you'd like to see next. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace.